And then if you're some kind of, you know, hardcore sweat maniac, then you're gonna be able to do it even faster. But what's up everybody, War here, welcome back to another Diablo build video for season 28. Now, I do wanna give a big shout out to my chat room in my live streams that we do here on YouTube for Diablo. They were asking me about if I was gonna do a Necromancer, um, class build video or an overview about the grace of anora set now there's going to be one negative that i'm going to talk about later uh for this build but let's go over everything that you're going to need how to play it and then of course demonstrate it all for you guys here on the channel so we have the grace of anora set the two-piece bonus where bone armor damage is increased by a thousand percent already pretty good and then the four-piece bone armor grants an additional three percent damage reduction per enemy hit now when you get your bone armor going it's a big swirling tornado of bone which you can see in the six-piece set damaging nearby enemies for a thousand percent weapon damage and increase the damage they take from necro from the necromancer by ten thousand percent so this is something very crucial it used to say bone armor did increase damage by 10,000 percent now it's the necromancer by 10,000 percent unless that's some oversight that I don't remember guys feel free to fact check me down in the comments but now that it's just overall damage from the necromancer this build is pretty pretty good um, only because of our being able to auto cast blood nova so we have the uh, five out of the six pieces here. It's really cool to see this set back because I always thought it was really cool and it looks really, really flashy here. Uh, we combined it with the Guardian set, guys, for um, a lot of extra damage. Now, this is going to be more of a speed variant as opposed to a pushing variant, but we'll talk about some items that you can change uh, for that as well. But we have the Guardian set just for the three piece for the additional 100% damage of our intelligence, which is huge. And then we have in our shoulders the mantle of channeling because we're going to be channeling siphon blood which is going to trigger all of our blood novas which is really really good okay we have paired this with the haunted visions which is going to make our simulacrums drain one percent of our maximum life but they last forever and then they don't go away then we have a crimson sentence for more damage against slowed or triple the bonus against enemies afflicted by any other control impairing effects and then we have coe for just a lot of damage okay now, these are the two items that you need for this kind of build to work is Iron Rose, which when you attack with Siphon Blood, you automatically cast a free Blood Nova, and then your Blood Nova does increase damage, which in turn will make our Simulacrums cast them as well, uh, which you'll see here with the Funerary Pick. Each Siphon Blood drains from two additional targets. They take increased damage, and then it gains a triple or gains double the bonus if it's only one target, and then the bonus from Siphon Blood Power Shift is now 20% per stack and, and uh, benefits all skills. So we get this stack up, and then we're just going to be basically using this to cast um our blood nova now we combine this into our cube guys we're going into blood uh tide blade death nova deals increased damage uh and then we have stewart griefs for movement speed uh royal ring grand order to bring the two builds together excuse me the two um sets together our legendary gems are bane of the trap for more damage i have zaya stone of vengeance here for more damage and uh and the chance to stun which is huge and then bane of the powerful for um, even more damage now there are some gems that you could swap out here guys before we get into our skills you could probably swap out gems you could do bane of the stricken that's fine um, you could do wreath of lightning for even more uh, movement speed if you really wanted to um, but the main one probably to take away is bane of the stricken or um, the esoteric uh, alteration for even more damage reduction because as we all know necromancers are pretty squishy so those are the two changes i would make there now when it comes to the gear guys uh you can swap out a lot of things here you could swap this out and do um haunted what is it uh De dante's binding in the belt put on your normal um shoulders here and then get rid of ring of royal grandor and do the what is it the koth amulet which increases our um bone armor stacks from 10 to 15 which is huge so you can do that and then you can just pick a really solid um bracer here to kind of just fill in the void so those, those are the kind of the the gear that you could swap out especially uh for more um like solid pushing builds into our skills guys of course we have siphon blood power shift this is going to give us a major damage increase then of course blood nova death nova you can still manually cast these if you want because it's really quick or you just siphon off everything for the extra damages which is what we're going to do uh then we got blood rush potency so that way we get uh armor increase and then we just move real fast uh frailty aura frailty which just gives us an automatic aoe uh curse 
And then, of course, a Bone Armor Distillation, which stuns enemies. And then Simulacrum Blood and Bone, so we get two of them, so we have maximum Blood Nova being cast. Into our passives, we have Standalone for 80% increased uh, armor because we're going to have two minions. Swift Harvesting to give us more attack speed. Uh, spreading uh, Maldiction to receive a 1% damage bonus for each enemy afflicted by a curse. We're going to be up close and personal, so everything should be cursed. And then I chose Dark Reaping to gain 2% Essence and Life per kill. Now, in this, you could swap this out. There's a few different things that you could use. You could use Blood for Blood, Brutus Power. You could use um, Grizzly Tribute. You can have Final Service on, especially if you're a hardcore character. You have one slot that's just kind of open to just, you know, whatever you kind of want to pick out of those. Any of them are good. I just choose to go with this because I want the Life per Hit. Or a uh, Life per Kill, excuse me. So those are our skills and passives, guys. Now into our stat priorities. These are gonna be a little wacky. I got them as best as I could to make the build for you guys. So let's go ahead and go through these now. In our helmet, we're not gonna want a socket, okay? We want intelligence, vitality, crit chance, and then we're gonna want um, blood nova damage, which you can get on the helm so you won't have a socket. Um, but if you want to have a socket, you could swap out the Vitality for the Blood Nova increase and then run a gem. If you are going to pick a gem, I would just pick the uh, Diamond for cooldown, which will affect your Bone Armor and your Potency. Just to kind of make sure you get around, you can constantly cast that. Into our shoulders, you want Intelligence, Vit, Life, Armor. Into our gloves, you want um, Intelligence, Attack Speed, not All Resist, Crit, Crit. Uh, in our chest, you want Intelligence, Vitality, Armor. In our Haunted Visions, which really sucks, but we want physical damage and then crit crit. Uh, in our Guardians, we want physical damage and int bit crit chance. In our Belt, we want intelligence, vitality, life, armor. Um, in our Ring, we want damage crit crit. And then the same thing over here, we're gonna want attack speed, crit chance, crit damage. In our Pants, intelligence, bit armor. In our Boots, intelligence, bit armor, death nova damage. In our offhand, we want damage, intelligence, vitality, crit chance, death nova damage. And then for our pick, we want damage, damage percent, intelligence, attack speed. Okay, and then you throw your gem in there. And then, of course, we are running uh, our topezes for just maximum intelligence increase, not only for damage, but intelligence is going to give us the, the armor buff there. So that is the build, guys. Now, how this plays out, we're just going to do a quick GR90, which we do as the baseline for all of our videos. I know some people really uh, cringe about not doing higher GRs. This is just the baseline for everything that we do, because as you start to min-max all of your um, stat priorities and stuff, you can climb higher and higher and higher, especially with more Paragon that you get. Also, our rings are only 25 apiece, and the one is 30, so keep that in mind. But this is how the build's gonna work. We're gonna hop in, we're gonna pop our potion, we're gonna pop simulacrum so we have those right away. We're gonna roll up to the first mob, dash in with blood rush, and then cast distillation so we can get our defenses there. And then we're just gonna siphon everything. Now, the one negative that I'm gonna say about this build in particular is that the best builds for the Necromancer now is any variation that runs these two items to be able to do auto casting blood nova. Okay, you have this build now, this Anaris build, and now you have uh, the normal Blood Nova build, which is the Tragools, and then you have LOD Blood Nova. So you have three different variations of this build, which are all a very strong build, but it's just the same thing. So you have three different builds that just do the same thing, which kind of sucks. And then the other thing that I that you'll see guys in the gameplay is that when you're siphoning, there's that like second two seconds delay that it takes when you start to siphon before your simulacrum start to hit your um your cast your blood novas which i really hate because instantly casting them is just so much faster i wish it was just a little bit quicker but that's okay otherwise let's get in here when you're doing this we're going to kind of dash around guys and group up as many as possible because we gain the most damage and effect from this build from pixelating uh monsters so if we dash by some minions don't be alarmed we're just gonna um hit some as much as we can like we're not gonna worry too much we want to be able to be in groups so we can see the aoe damage here now the build is really fun don't get me wrong the build is super cool it's just um it benefits in group big mobs like this which is kind of what we're looking for but it is slow you're going to be looking at builds like this to do sub three minutes is what you're what you're looking for if you get anything below that 
fantastic. You are on the right pace. And then if you're some kind of, you know, hardcore sweat maniac, then you're going to be able to do it even faster. But you can see that slight delay that happens as opposed to just instantly casting it. And sometimes on the, the lighter groups like that, I'll just cast them just to get the monsters killed. But you want to keep siphoning blood up to keep that damage buff up. Okay, we always want that. Always hit your distillation as much and as often as possible. So that way you can benefit from the um, damage increase from your uh, Captain Crimson's for sure. Which is huge. That damage increase is not to be messed with. Make sure you're always using your potions. We got really lucky with these mob types to be able to, um, you know, get these big groups like this. This is awesome. So... And then a lot of a lot of speed pylons, which is what we love. But you can see the build is just, it's really cool. It's really flavorful. It's super fun to use, um, especially if you're a Necromancer main. Um, comparatively, now when you, when you see these builds, I think that maybe Bone Spear might just be slightly better than this. But really, you have the same delay because you got to cast Bone Spear on the run. And... Uh, now, if every time I clicked as if I was doing like a hungering arrow or casting something, if that was just a, like every time I like press Siphon Blood, it would just automatically, you know, cast the Blood Nova, then it would be, this build would be so much cooler, I think, and just so much more fun. But we got the sub uh, three minutes, guys, which is what you're looking for. This build is really, really cool. If you're a Necromancer main, then this build will be just fine, guys. I wouldn't worry too much about not using um, something different. I mean, this is going to be a cool variation if you don't like the Trogdul's kind of setup. Look at that. We did it in 2 minutes and 10 seconds, so we kind of crushed that. So, the build is really, really fun, guys. I wanted to make this build for you guys, the viewers down in my chat, because you guys have absolutely been showing so much support. And I appreciate you guys, so whenever you guys have a suggestion or something that you want me to go over, then I'm 100% going to do that for you guys. So... This is the Inaris Nova build. Uh, it's really, really fun, guys. The power level, I just I just don't like that. It takes a second, you know, a few second delay on the funerary pick when you're siphoning. And that now you have like two other builds that just mimic this completely. So it's kind of like just pick your poison in a way. But the build is still very, very strong for the Necromancer, guys. So like the video if you've enjoyed it. Make sure to sub if you're new. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.